This video is brought to you by Keeps. What's up guys, Michael here to dissect the most outrageous thing you consumed this Thanksgiving. No, not Aunt Leandra's homebrewed pumpkin liqueur. We're talking South Park, the post COVID special. Now South Park never fails to shock. Still, throughout its 23 season run, it has always remained firmly rooted in the relationships between its four central characters, the foul-mouthed elementary schoolers, Kyle, Stan, Cartman, and Kenny. But in this special, for the first time ever, we see the boys all grown up. But what does moving South Park into the future do? And specifically, can it tell us anything important about the present day carnival of crap we're living through? Let's find out in this quick take on South Park. Will the future suck ass? And as always, spoilers ahead. But before we get into it, I want to tell you about this video sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three men will experience male pattern baldness of some kind by the time they're 35? That's so many dudes. But I have some good news for that bevy of bros. Keeps exists. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier and more affordable to prevent hair loss. The process starts with a free consultation with a licensed Keeps doctor. Your doctor can help you get the right combination of FDA approved prescriptions and over the counter medications to help prevent further hair loss. And it's all shipped right to your door. And you won't have to worry about running out and ruining your treatment routine because Keeps automatically refills your subscription every three months. You can message your Keeps doctor 24 seven to update them on your progress or ask some questions. Soon you'll see why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. You can see results in four to six months, so get started today. If you're ready to take action to prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash wisecrack or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash wisecrack. Now, back to the show. This special opens with some pretty good news. The pandemic is almost over in 2061. Please kill me gently. But then, tragedy strikes. Kenny, now a well-respected philanthropist and brilliant scientist, has once again kicked the proverbial bucket. But for like, real this time, I guess. The news reaches his old friends. You've got adult Stan, an online liquor consultant, which sounds like a super fake job I've already written a cover letter for. Then there's adult Kyle, whose only defining qualities seem to be still lives in South Park and still hates Cartman. And of course, there's adult Cartman, the juvenile anti-Semite turned orthodox rabbi. And yes, we're as suspicious as Kyle about that. Anyway, the former bros gather to mourn their beloved hoodie enthusiast and future South Park. And it turns out the future is really f***ing stupid, full of things that nobody needs, wants, or ever would have asked for. There are singing doorbells. Apparently in the future, all doorbells sing, sing. Comedy takes place in the Moderna Center. Live from the Moderna Center in downtown New York, it's Late Night with Jimmy. Also, uh, Amazon thinks they might have discovered gold on Mars. And these dudes inexplicably wear weird bubble hats. Every single store is a deluxe or supermax version of itself, even the community center. And Applebee's and Denny's have produced an evil spawn. Denny's is now Denny's Applebee's Max. Come taste the difference. Credit cards are out, crypto is in. Now, of course, we only take Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency because, you know, it's the future. Meat is donezo, crickets are on the menu, and honestly, I'd rather just go vegetarian. You'll see there's some dishes made from insect protein on the menu. That, of course, is because here in the future, we've all learned that insects are a valuable and sustainable food, and we no longer fear it as food. Some people can afford a specialized dog optometrist, while other people live outside City Hall. The cars are self-driving, but it's not even that fun. Also, also, music sounds like this. We are all living in the future. As one reporter succinctly summarizes, the future certainly sucks. But the future isn't just shockingly dumb, it also seems pretty lonely. On a personal level, our favorite bro squad remains torn after decades of animosity. But things are also pretty bleak on a broader social level. Instead of tossing footballs on the playground, kids wander around in VR goggles. Also, one dude just shoots someone and happily takes their groceries. And then there's how society treats the elderly. They're mostly shuttered up in one big building where they sit around refusing to share their emotions. It's four o'clock, you know what that means. It's share time. <laughs> the world's top priority is keeping these old folks alive, despite the fact that they all seem pretty miserable and don't get to interact meaningfully with society. 
Everyone is alive, but none of them get to actually live. And most importantly, there's Stan, whose only real relationship appears to be with his hologram, Alexa, who manifests as a badgering wife. She nags Stan in between offering him special deals on new headphones. By the way, I can tell you about some great deals on headphones at Best Buy. Would you like to know more? Based on a slowly revealed family tragedy, his sister was in the barn and she burned to death. Because you locked her in the barn because she wouldn't do her weed chores because she hated weed too. His mother couldn't take the loss of Shelly and so she killed herself, which is your fault. Stan's grown bitter, defensive, and suspicious of everyone. You judge me. You all sit here and judge me. Well, f all of you. Instead of mourning Kenny's death in public, he drinks the pain away and passes out in his car. Though we were intrigued by his pour some wine into your beer cocktail. It's not pounding beer and wine. I drop wine shots into the beer. It's called a smorgasbord and it's very cultural. This vision of the future had us thinking a lot about something called atomism. This is a concept that came from Greek thinkers Democritus and Leucippus, who envisioned the world as made up of a gajillion tiny atoms. Philosophers Thomas Hobbes and John Locke then used the concept of atoms to theorize about the way people behave. Essentially, each person functions as their own individual atom, pursuing their own goals based on their own motivations. But to exist in a society, you have to negotiate a balance between your individual interests and your responsibilities to that society, AKA you gotta sign that metaphorical social contract. Lots of philosophers since Hobbes and Locke have debated about just how much people should have to give up in order to live in civilized society and how much responsibility we have to our fellow society members. In future South Park, we see just how little responsibility people feel for those around them when the town finds out that Kenny died of a new COVID variant. The COVID Delta Plus rewards program variant. The town erupts into a selfish, fear-driven panic that's all too recognizable. People jump out of windows, raid the grocery store, fight over paper towels, and so on. In short, they seem to have learned nothing since March 2020. Then, news surfaces that one person in town has yet to be vaccinated. So the government constructs a quarantine wall with violators being shot on the spot. Please! I just need to go to a sporting event! Why can't the unvaccinated person just be identified and given an easy jab? Because it's the future and we don't single out or ridicule anyone for their personal beliefs. We learn that the anti-vaxxer in question is none other than Clyde, who has an explanation. Hey, I just, I just need to see the research first, you know? Presumably, conspiracy theories propagated in virtual echo chambers have made him hesitant to make the simplest of sacrifices for his community. But I read that sometimes in the lab where the vaccine is made, if somebody ate shellfish, that it can get cross-contaminated and have leftover residual shellfishness. So you're saying you won't take the COVID vaccine out of shellfishness? Yes, that is correct just a general sense of selfishness. Now, the question about our collective responsibility to society has come up plenty on South Park, where creators Trey Parker and Matt Stone's shared libertarian values regularly surface. As we've mentioned before, Parker's self-proclaimed political philosophy is, don't tell me what to do. And South Park has regularly emphasized the importance of personal freedom, even if those freedoms don't necessarily conform to the public interest. In fact, the worst sin on South Park is often just being super annoying about how noble your personal choices are. However, in this episode, the show seems to be somewhat reevaluating that stance. It seems to even explicitly roast individualism taken too far, suggesting that anti-vaxxers aren't making a personal choice, they're just being really f***ing shellfish. Uh, I, I mean, selfish. In South Park circa 2061, there doesn't really seem to be a social contract at all, because again, stuff like this happens. And the show seems to be predicting that this is the direction the world is headed. This all makes us think of possessive individualism, a term first coined in the early 60s by scholar C.B. McPherson. Possessive individualism has two components. First is the Enlightenment era idea of the supreme importance of the individual's human rights and political autonomy. The second is the explosive rise of the globalized capitalist marketplace since the end of World War II, a marketplace predicated on the importance of freedom of choice. You know, like your freedom to choose between shopping here or here. We see the primacy of consumption throughout the show, particularly in the character of Alexa, who mediates every emotional conversation with Stan by offering him the opportunity to buy more shit. 
Okay, fine. There's a new upgrade available for your Amazon Prime membership. Would you like to know more? But scholar Daniel W. Bromley contends that the extreme modern emphasis on individualism, particularly in the context of our freedom as consumers, has consequences. Specifically, he writes that possessive individualism has gradually undermined the emergence of reciprocal obligations that are necessary to a sense of what might be called a shared community of interest. Amidst this orgy of consumption, he argues, notions of civic obligation are considered quaint and impertinent. That makes it hard for governments to levy taxes for shared social goods and services like education, mass transit, and so on. Under possessive individualism, the answer to the question, what do we owe each other as members of the same society, would basically be jack shit. Bromley argues that in some ways, this intense atomization tends to threaten political coherence and a shared sense of purpose, and even negates any meaningful social contract. We see this on some level in the way South Park has lost its shared sense of community amongst families. I don't have a son. Friends. Maybe we could crash here. Look, I, uh, I don't think that's gonna work. Then community at large. <laughs> but is there a way out for South Park? Kenny died, we learn, attempting to prevent this shitty future. But while we spend the whole episode thinking he was trying to stop COVID from emerging, he actually was just trying to save the boys' friendships from a COVID-era breakdown. Dr. McCormick says that these three completely ruined everything when they let COVID break up their friendship and became argumentative, combative, pessimistic assholes. Here, the boys act as a sort of microcosm of our broader pandemic-era need to save ourselves, not solely through science, but also by not being assholes. By working to navigate differences, forgive individual shortcomings, and come to some consensus about what is necessary to fight the pandemic. We lost that. We lost our sense of fun, our sense of humor. Maybe the pandemic was a big test and we all failed. In what feels like a pivot from its usual missive, the show seems to be saying that sometimes having a cultural consensus is good and that individualism can't solve everything. Maybe we're reaching, but it feels like the show is saying there are some societal problems where the collective needs to be on the same page to find a solution. And in the absence of that, we're gonna be stuck in this cycle over and over again until we end up grumbling to ourselves about our magical weed in an old folks home. Parker and Stone might be two champions of libertarianism, but even they seem to get that we still need to have some bare minimum social contract upon which the don't tread on me of American freedom can spread its wings and fly. Or like, buy guns and do podcasts. But what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Big thanks to our patrons for all your support and be sure to check out our podcast. Hit that subscribe button like it's holding an appealing bag of groceries and don't forget to ring that bell. And as always, thanks for watching. Later.